Hello students, in this video lesson, I am going to talk about the development of sporophyte of Anthocerus. So let's begin. Anthocerus plant body can be morphologically differentiated into thalloid gametophyte and elongated spindle shaped sporophyte or sporogonium. Sporophyte usually grows in clusters from the upper surface of the thallus, each surrounded at its base by a tubular involucre. Zygote is the pioneer structure of sporophytic generation which is formed by the fusion of anthrozoid and A. In the next step, the zygote then enlarges until it fills the venter cavity and then secretes a cellulosic wall around it. After this, zygote enters upon active segmentation. The first division of the zygote is usually vertical, which divides zygote into two more or less equal tetracells. The next division is transverse. As a result, four celled embryo is formed. Out of four cells, the upper two cells are usually larger than the basal ones. Vardwaz, however, reported that the first division of the zygote is transverse and second is vertical. In either case, each of the resultant four celled embryo divides by second vertical divisions at right angle to the first, which results an octant embryo, which consists of eight cells arranged in two tires, or you can say two layers of four cells each. According to Mera and Hando, the upper tire in Anthocerus erectus forms the capsule and the intermediate zone, whereas the lower tire gives rise to the foot. However, several variations occur in different species of Anthocerus with regard to the further division of the cells of the octant. In the majority of the species, however, the four larger cells of the upper tire undergo another transfer division which results the embryo which consists of three tires of four cells each, in which the cells of the uppermost tire are still larger. The four cells of the lowest tire form the food. The uppermost tire develops into the capsule and the medium tire gives rise mainly to the intermediate zone and some part of the food. In the context of Anthocerus crispulus, the cells of both the halves divides by transverse wall to form a four-tired embryo, out of which the lower two tires develop into the foot while the upper two tires form the capsule. Now let us discuss the development of foot. The cells of the tire, which is destined to be foot, divide and re-divide in all directions to form a rounded mass of parenchymal cells. The foot is broad massive and like an inverted cap. The peripheral cells of the foot in some species grow out into certain tubular rhizoid-like processes which penetrate the tissue of the gametophyte. They are hostorial in function which help to absorb the nutrient from the gametophyte. Now the development of capsule. The cells which are destined to form the capsule of the sporophyte divides by periclinal walls which delimit an outer layer of four cells, the amputatium enclosing an inner mass of four cells, the endothatium. From the entire endothatium originates the sterile tissue, columella, which in young capsule is made up of four vertical rows of cells, while in the older capsule it consists of 16 vertical rows. The cells of the amputatium soon divide periclinally to form an outer sterile layer of jacket initials and inner fertile layer of sporogenous cells, known as the archaeosporium. The jacket initials layer divide by periclinal walls to form capsule wall, which is 4 to 6 layer thick.
The outermost cutinized layer of the capsule wall is known as epidermis, which also develops stomata at various places. The cells within the epidermis are photosynthetic, which encloses intercellular spaces. The photosynthetic tissue communicates with the exterior through the stomata. The archesporium, when young, overarches the rounded apex of the columella and gives the appearance of a dome. The cells of the archesporium can easily be distinguished from the sterile cells of the columella by their denser protoplasm. In some species, the archesporium may remain single layer throughout, like in Anthocerus erectus, or it gets divided periclinally to be two or up to four layered. The archesporium or simply the sporogenous tissue differentiates into two kinds of cells, which are spore mother cells and pseudo elater mother cells. Spore mother cells develops into spore, whereas the pseudo elater mother cell develops into pseudo elaters. Spore mother cells are the large cells which may be oval to spherical in form, each of which contain a granular, a denser cytoplasm, a distinct nucleus, and a chloroplast. Each of these spore mother cells undergoes meiosis to form the haploid spores in the process known as sporogenesis. pseudo mother cells are cylinder, sterile cells with small nuclei. According to Vardavaj, these pseudo mother cells divide by transverse or oblique walls to form a network of sterile cells. And at the time of dehiscence, the network breaks up into one to three cells pseudo -elaters. The apical growth of the capsule ceases with the establishment of the archesporium, columella, and the wall region. Further growth of the capsule is by the activity of the basal intercalary meristem in the intermediate zone. It continuously adds new cells at the base of the capsule, which become progressively differentiated into the columella, the archesporium, and the capsule wall. Consequently, the dehiscence of the capsule extends over long periods. The sporophyte of Anthocerus continues to live as long as thallus leaves. It is a sharp contrast to the short-lived sporophyte of the liverworts. Coincide with these changes, a protective sheath, the involucre, develops around the sporophyte. It is a fleshy covering which encloses the sporophyte completely when it is young. The involucre grows simultaneously with the elongation of the capsule. However, later, due to the more rapid growth of the capsule, as compared to the involucre, the apical part of the involucre gets pierced and through which capsule comes out. This pierced involucre forms a collar around the base of the capsule and probably helps in protecting and supporting the meristem zone of the capsule and in retention of water. So this much for today. Thank you for watching. Like and subscribe the channel.